Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1983 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today we head to Toronto to start a three-game series versus the Toronto Blue Jays. Pitching for Detroit today is Dan Petrie, and on the mound for the Toronto Blue Jays is Jim Clancy. And so the Tigers sweep the Red Sox at home to start off the season. We're 3-0 as we uh, head into Exhibition Stadium to face the Blue Jays. And I've been really waiting for this opportunity to take a look at the uh, Blue Jays stadium effects. If you didn't see the um, American League East preview, we're going to take a quick look here at the um, stadium effects for the Blue Jays. Oops, uh, we're going to flip it over to Toronto. There we go. Home runs by left-handed batters in this stadium is 200 it's 100 percent more likely to hit a home run here uh, than in any other stadium that is by far the biggest uh differential i've seen uh righties hit 102 so two percent more likely uh hits in general by left-handers you see 35 percent right-handers not so good and you should see the rest of it here the overall park factor is 109 uh, by far the biggest margin of any stadium uh, in the American League related to uh, 100 being average. So um, I stacked the left-handers today. I can't wait to see what Toronto does as a team hitting at home. Uh, they were on the road for the first series um, of, the, uh, of the season, so this is their first chance. This is their home opener. Uh, we're going to flip back to Detroit here. Also... You may not have realized, but I did get Baseball Mogul 2022. Here it is, version 25. Um, I picked it up yesterday, and I had to do a little bit of work to get this uh, translated to our 1983 season that I started with the old uh, Baseball Mogul 2021. So I had to get the, the photos transferred over. I had to get the logos transferred over. And then last night, um, I spent a little time uh, just tweaking the um, stadium effects uh, because that did not, did not transfer over properly. So, Okay, having said all that, we are ready to get started with today's game against the Blue Jays. As always, I appreciate everyone following along, like, and or subscribe to the channel. Uh, we are going to yeah, turn that off. Here we go. Uh, so yeah, we're going to take a look here at our... Starter for today, Dan Petrie, current Blue Jays batters are batting 105 against him. Pretty high on base percentage, though. Uh, of course, Petrie's making his first start. We're going to take a look at the bullpen. We will not have Keith Comstock or Tom Hugh available. Both struggled in yesterday's game, uh, giving up a bunch of runs. Uh, and let's go ahead and take a look at today's lineup against the right-hander, Jim Clancy. We have Greg Brock playing first base today. And uh, Lance Parrish back in there. Catcher Gary Hancock will be the DH. And Guy Solaris is going to give Alan Tremel a break uh, by playing shortstop today. Okay, let's go ahead and do the official Tigers lineup rundown. Batting leadoff, playing second base, is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting second in right field is Glenn Wilson. Batting third in left field is Kirk Gibson. Batting cleanup playing third base is Mickey Hatcher. Batting fifth playing first base is Greg Brock. Batting sixth and catching today is Lance Parrish. Batting seventh and DHing is Gary Hancock. Batting eighth playing center field is Andre Dawson. And batting ninth playing shortstop is Guy Solars. Okay, Jim Clancy pitching for the Blue Jays today. Clancy was a, a fourth round draft pick by the Rangers in 1974, and he was a, a sent to the uh, Blue Jays in the 1976 expansion draft. Uh, he's got 140 wins in his career in real life, 128 uh, total with the Blue Jays. Kind of an unsung hero. Uh, if you uh, consider how poor some of these Blue Jay teams were in the uh, in the 80s, 
He went 11 and 16 last year, making 37 starts. Pretty high ERA, 557. Uh, he walks a lot of batters. He did lead the league in walks one year. Uh, only 122 strikeouts. Uh, opponents batted 291 against him. Four complete games, three shutouts. His fastball tops out around 89 miles an hour. Uh, his best pitch is his fastball, but it's only an 82. He's got a slider. He's got a forkball mixed in there. Uh, overall rating, a 78, so below average. And uh, at 27 years old, he's getting ready to go to free agency. So he needs a pretty good season this year if he wants the uh, Blue Jays to uh, resign him. But maybe he's better off going somewhere else. You see uh, Jim Clancy here with his 1983 uh, Tops baseball card. Here is the Blue Jays defensive alignment for today. Uh, they have no gold glovers on this team, but um, uh, Omar Marino out there in center field. Uh, best defensive player they've got. Okay, here's Sweet Lou leading off against Jim Clancy. Play ball! Lou betting 500 on the season. He'll probably get the day off tomorrow as he leads off the game with a base hit to right field. Lynn Jones gets it back in, and we are off and running here. Do we? What is uh, Petrali's arm? 82, so just a little bit above average for the rookie there. So uh, we're going to hit and run. We're not going to try to run. Uh, you know, do a straight steal. We're going to hit and run with Glenn Wilson. Wilson two for eight with a home run. And he takes strike three looking, and Whitaker steals second on his own. That is his first of the season. I don't want to jinx us, but we have not been thrown out on the base path stealing this year. Okay, so Whitaker in scoring position for Gibson. Gibby had the, the uh, day off yesterday, and we have him in left field today as we're giving Ricky a break. Okay, so first and second is Gibby Walks. Next up is Mickey Hatcher. Mickey had a double and a home run in yesterday's ball game. Ground ball to second, and they turn two. Toronto gets out of the jam. We go to the bottom of the first inning. Here is the lineup for the Blue Jays against Dan Petrie. Omar Marino leading off in center field. Batting second in right field is Lynn Jones. Batting third in left field is Warren Cromarty. Batting cleanup and DHing today is Lloyd Mosby. Batting fifth and catching is Gino Petrali. Batting sixth, playing first base is Tim Corcoran. Batting seventh, playing third base is Paul Dade. Batting eighth, playing shortstop is Steve Davis. And batting ninth, playing second base is Garth Orge. Peaches on the mound. We have been waiting for him to come around. This is the uh, third sim season with Petrie. And uh, each year we've had to pull him from uh, the rotation for, due to ineffectiveness. Last year he was injured in spring training and uh, didn't make the team until the middle of the season. Uh, and he had an okay year. He went four and two with a 4.10 ERA. 59 innings pitched, 31 Ks. Opponents batted uh, 255 against him. No complete games, no shutouts. Uh, his fastball tops out at 89. He's got a couple good pitches. Uh, his fastball is his best pitch, rated at 91. And his slider's an 83. He's got a change and a curve mixed in there. His overall rating is a 93. He's the highest rated pitcher on our team. And yet he has uh, not really uh, been effective. He's walked more than he struck out uh, in the first two Sim seasons. And then last year he kind of got it together. Uh, at least he struck out more than he walked. Uh, he is going to arbitration. And this is a guy that we're going to have to think about. Uh, it would go a long way for him to have a good year this year. And if he does, then maybe we'll keep him. If not, he could be trade bait uh, at the, de at the uh, trade deadline. Here's the Tigers defensive alignment for today. We've got a gold glove at second base and uh, that's it. Murray and Ricky, our, our other gold lovers, are 
uh, on the bench today. Here's Omar Marino leading off. They have a bunch of lefties. Like I said, lefties hit well. Let's see if uh, Petrie can handle Omar Marino. He does. He strikes him out. I like to see that for Petrie. One down. Next up is Lynn Jones. Jones makes contact. Ground ball to Whitaker. Two outs. That will bring up Warren Cromarty. Left-handed batter batting 250, and he gets a base hit to right. Cromarty on first for Lloyd Mosby. That is Lloyd Mosby's rookie card. He was actually a rookie in 1983 as he grounds the ball to Whitaker, and that'll do it. So smooth sailing for Petrie in the first. We go to the top of the second. We're going to lead it off with Brock, followed by Parrish and Hancock. Here's Greg Brock, and he clubs it to dead center. Lefties crush in this park. The first home run for the Brock Ness Monster. And it's 1-0 Detroit. Next up. Big wheel, Lance Parrish. He gets a base hit into center field. Third hit for the Tigers. Parrish on first for Gary Hancock. He was the uh, player of the game yesterday. He had two home runs in his uh, debut with the Tigers after being gone for a season and a half. He pops it up into foul ground. Play is made by the third baseman, Paul Dade. So Parrish is on first. Do we hit and run with Dawson? I think we do. I think we've tried to get Parrish in motion here. Dawson makes good contact. And here he pulls it into left field on a line. That's out number two. So it's going to be up to Guy Solars to get something going here. First start of the season. First start at short and he strikes out swinging and that'll do it for the Tigers they get the lead on the home run by Greg Brock and we go to the bottom of the second inning Gino Petrali leading off Petrali Corcoran and Dade which was low and inside but Petrali was swinging anyway ground ball to first and Brock makes the play one down here's former Detroit Tiger Tim Corcoran he was out of baseball by 1981, but he's the starting first baseman over here. Batted 276 last year versus righties. Here he pops up. Whitaker makes the play. Petrie looking good so far. Paul Dade has the only home run on the season for the Blue Jays. He shoots it out to right field, and that's a 1-2-3 inning for Petrie. We go to the top of the third. 1-0 Detroit. Whitaker started the game off with a hit, and he walks this time up. I think this is a hit. And, well, so we hit and run last time with, with uh, Wilson. And he didn't even swing. Whitaker had to steal second. You know what? We're going to let him take a cut. Okay. Strikes out. Looking for the second time. Three Ks for Clancy. So one down. Whitaker on first. Here's Gibby. Gibby only the second uh, game he's played this year. And he gets a base hit through the left side of the infield. First and second, fourth hit for the Tigers. This feels like a double steal situation, but we're going to let... We don't want to take the bat out of Hatcher's hands. We're going to let him take a swing here. Oh, wild pitch moves him up. So that'll make it an easy call. We're going to have uh, Hatcher at least try to make a sack fly. Now, I think Cromarty's got a good arm. We know Marino doesn't just from our experience of having him on our team. So we're going to let Hatcher take a cut. Oh, line drive to right. 
Okay, not a double play. I thought someone might get picked off base on the line. So that is a bummer. We're going to give Brock a shot here to cut. And a base hit into right field. Will Gibby score from second? He does score. Running with two outs, and it's three to nothing. Detroit, three RBIs for Brock today. Nicely done. Brock Ness Monster stepping up. And then Parrish pulls it down the left field line. Is that going to be a double? It is. Parrish's first double of the season led the team with 24 last year. Taking a look there at Parrish. I guess having the day off was good for him. So second and third, we got a little two-out rally going. And a slow roller from Hancock, and that'll end the inning. So the Tigers put two more on the board. We go to the bottom of the third. Davis, Orange, and Moreno do up. Here's Steve Davis. Well, it looked like ball four, but Davis was swinging. Come back here to Petrie. One down. Next up is Garth Orange. That was a hanging curveball way up there as uh, he hits a grounder to first. And Brock turns it into the second out. Marino flying out to left. Game is moving along. Only one hit so far for the Blue Jays. Top of the fourth, Andre Dawson leading off. Ground ball up the middle. Snagged by Orange. One out. Okay, Guy Salar's up. We need to get him off the schneid. And he strikes out for the second time. Four Ks for Clancy. Up to 65 pitches here in the fourth. So here's Lou. Two for two. No, one. I, I'm sorry. He had a base hit and another walk. So two walks. Been on base all three times. That's the point. Um, now we're going to let... We'll, I mean, I don't know what to do here. He struck out looking twice. Don't take a cut. And he's going to fly out to right field where Jones is waiting for it. So we go to the bottom of the fourth. Jones leading off against Petrie. Petrie at 50 pitches. Looking good so far. Sharp ground ball to Brock. Brock had an error in yesterday's game. Wasn't costly, though. Next up, Warren Cromarty. Ground ball to short. This might be the worst team in baseball, the Blue Jays. Um, I feel good about Petrie's pitching, but they, obviously they can't hit other than Dave Steeb, maybe Luis Leal. They don't have much of a, a pitching staff. Oh, there's a walk for Petrie. That's only his first walk of the game. Lloyd Mosby on first. Got some good speed over there. Gino Petrali up. Oh, that. Look at that. That was a borderline miss by the umpire. We did not get the call on that. Back-to-back -back walks. And Tim Corcoran is up. Looking to exact some revenge against his old team, and he does. That couldn't have been any more obvious with the back-to-back -back walk setting up the three-run shot. And uh, Petrie, right after I complimented him, completely fell apart. And then we strike out. Okay, well, Corker's three-run home run ties up the game. We go to the top of the fifth. Gibby leading off. And another hit by a left-hander. So Gibson, his second hit of the game. Runner on first. Now Gibby, what's his... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. So it does not have the percentage available. I believe I... I think it was Joe M. that told me uh, that you have to toggle it on. So we don't really know what his percentage is to steal second base. 
Um, well, we'll correct that because I enjoy that feature. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit and run with Mickey. Nobody out. And a ground ball to show. Gibby will advance. With Brock at the play. We got runner in scoring position. We're going to let Brock take a cut. Why not? He's two for two with a dong. Oh, double dong day for Brock. A two-run shot to dead center field. Man, what is going to happen to lefties in this ballpark? Did I dial it up too much? Um, we are going to have many slugfests here, I have a feeling. And then Parrish gets his third hit. He's batting 500 on the season. Nine hits with one down in the fifth for the Tigers. Here's a guy who's not gotten in on it today. It's Gary Hancock. He's 5 for 19 in his career against Jim Clancy. And he pulls it into a double play. That'll end the inning. Nice little rally for the Tigers, though. Get the lead back. 5 to 3. And, uh, well, uh, yeah, Brock has all five RBI. So nicely done there for Greg Brock. Let's see if Petrie can get through the fifth here with Steve Davis leading off. Slow roller to third. Hatcher tosses him out. One down. Garth Orge up next. Hey, there's strikeout number three for Petrie. So two quick outs here. As uh, we have the lefty group coming up once again, starting with Omar Marino. And Marino, you're not going to see him hit too many home runs. He does hit it to dead center field, though. 378 feet, just a long, loud out. So Petrie gets through five. He's only given up two hits. We're going to have to, with all these lefties coming up, we'll have to play it by ear next inning. So let's go ahead and pull up the in game stats. I mean, player of the game, pretty obvious at this point. It's Brock. Three for three with two home runs. And uh, Parrish, does that, he's also, also three for three with a double. As uh, Dawson here leading off, he's 0 for 2. And he strikes out. Five Ks for Clancy. Two of them against Solars as he steps in. He makes contact this time. He's headed in the right direction. Ground ball to first. Corcoran steps on the bag. So two quick outs. Here's Sweet Lou. Lou one for one with a couple of walks and a stolen base. Grounds out to short. So a nice one, two, three inning for Clancy. We go to the bottom of the six. Tigers are up by two. Lynn Jones leading off 0 for three and a couple of walks in his career against Petrie. Ground ball to second and Whitaker. Tosses him out. One down. Okay, so now we have the heart of the lineup. They're all lefties. Um, and both hits were by left-handers, so I guess that makes sense. Cromarty, ground ball to first. And Lloyd Mosby. Jackson. Oh, my God. There's going to be so many left-handed home runs. Oh, man. Okay. It's only the third hit for Petrie. Uh, he's coming up on uh, the century mark for pitches. Wow, I thought for sure that was going to be gone. Okay, that's... Uh... No, I think we're going to... Gosh. I think we're going to... Uh... Let him finish off. Because if not, we're going to bring in a lefty for one batter, you know? So we're trying to think, uh, trying to think about our relievers, which is something we did not do very well last year. And here we go. He gets him to pop it up. Yeah, okay. Place made, and that'll do it. So that's going to be it for Petrie. He gets through six, gives up four runs on four hits. A couple of walks in there. We go to the top of the seventh, and the Blue Jays are going to bring in the right-hander, Jim Acker. Acker, not a bad season last year. 42 games. Two and two with a 424 ERA. More walks than strikeouts. More hits than innings pitched. Youch. 
Opponents batting 274. He had five saves, no blueies. Good job by him. 89 mile an hour fastball maxes out. It's an 84 rating. He's got a slider. He's got a change up. He's only 24 years old. He's got a little bit of room to grow. His overall uh, rating is 78. Peak somewhere around 91. And uh, he doesn't go to arbitration until next year. So uh, another solid season, uh, perhaps, for Acker before they have to make a decision. So now it's uh, we have Wilson, we have Gibby, and we have Hatcher. So the lefties, let's just take a minute here to look. Whitaker, one for two as a lefty. Gibson, two for two. Brock, three for three. But Hancock is 0 for three. On their team, 0 for 3, 1 for 3, 2, 1 for 2, 1 for 2, 1 for 3. Two home runs for the lefties. So, I almost think you've really got to play a lefty reliever in there against the lefties just to prevent anything from going too far haywire. Acker walks Wilson to lead off the inning. Gibby up next. Oh, Gibby striking out swinging. So the first time Gibson's been put down today. Uh, do we hit and run with Hatcher? We're going to let him take a cut. He's 0 for 3. And he pops it up. Second baseman Orge camps under it, makes the play. Two outs. And here's our uh, hero today. It's Greg Brock. Can we get a Repeat. Oh my god. Oh, it's going to fall short. He crushed it 319 feet. Made me think for a minute we were going to have uh, a three run game for our boy uh, Brock, but no such luck. We go to the bottom of the seventh. We're up a run. Petrie had 101 pitches, so we're going to take him out. Not a great performance, but we'll, we'll accept it. As uh, we're going to bring in Dave Smith, his second appearance this year. Take a look at him real quick here. You know the numbers. Had a good year coming over from Houston last year. Getting three saves from uh, for us. He's uh, got an 89 mile an hour fastball. But it's rated at 90, so it's his best pitch. He's got a sinker he mixes in. And again, another player going to arbitration. Okay. He's going to face Paul Dade, Davis, and Orange. So it's the bottom of the lineup. Not much of a high leverage situation. Here's Paul Dade. Oh, Dave, uh, Dave Smith strikes him out. Nicely done. One down. Here's Steve Davis. He's 0 for 2 on the day. And he gets a ground ball past Solars. It's short. Five hits for Toronto. Uh, we are going to pull the corners in. Assuming that uh, Orge with his 86 bunt is going to try to sack. No, he's taking a cut and striking out. Okay, so... This is where we are taking Dave Smith out. We're going to bring in Cappy. Cappy pitched two innings. In uh, one of the games in the three-game series against Boston. And, uh, of course, he was an all-star. Our best reliever last year, uh, argu you know, arguably, uh, with uh, Weaver pitching under uh, two ERA as well. And uh, you know the drill with Cappy. You see here he's on the uh, Astros. The Tigers uh, traded him in real life uh, after the 82 season to Houston. Okay. So, runner on first, two outs. Here's Omar Marino. I don't think Davis is going to be running with a left-hander on the mound. Marino crushes it to center. That's two long balls to center for Marino, but nothing comes of it. We go to the top of the eighth. Jim Acker remains on the mound. Parrish, Hancock, and Dawson are due up. Parrish, three for three on the day, pops it up. Kind of going against the uh, the whole lefty idea there. One down, here is Gary Hancock. 
There's the hit for Hancock. So every lefty has a hit in this ball game, with the exception of Marino. One down, runner on first. Andre Dawson watches a wild pitch go by. Hancock advances to second. So now we have a runner in scoring position. Um, I think we're going to just go let him take a cut. I was, we could, you know, hit to the right side, move him along, but uh, we have the lead. We'll take an opportunity here to. Okay. Come on. Two wild pitches. And now they're going to pull the infield in. That will give us a chance to sack fly. That is something that Dawson does very well. Infield's pulled in. Uh, Hancock is not speedy, so as long as it's not hit the left field, he should be all right. Oh, he pops it up on the infield. Davis, backpedaling, makes the catch. And it's going to be up to Solars. Come on, Gee. Good time for his first hit of the season. Let's get out to Schneid. Oh, he pops it up. All right. Well, good turn of fortune there for Toronto. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Tigers are up a run. We're going to leave Cappy in there. He gets righties out pretty well, too. Lynn Jones hits uh, lefties. Really great, though. 358. Um, yeah, we want Cappy to get through this group of lefties here. Uh, I think we're going to pull the outfield in. There we go. Try to keep the ball in front of us. Ground ball to first. Brock. Yes. Makes the play. Kind of got to hold my breath. You just feel like those uh, inopportune errors will pop up when you least expect it. Oh, no. Could happen now. Brock. Okay. Back to back. Brock. Ground balls. Two down. Now, that home run by Mosby, was that his first career home run? Oh, no, he had two last year. No, actually, I'm sorry, two in 1980. He got a little cup of coffee. Okay, so two down. Here's Lloyd Mosby, one for two with a home run. And a base hit up the middle. Mosby will not be denied. Six hits for Toronto. Gino Petrolli didn't have a hit versus lefties last year. And that's because he didn't play in the majors last year. All right, here we go. Ground ball, base hit through the left side of the infield. Mosby will hold it second. And that is the tying run on second base. All right, um, well... I don't know what to do here with Tim Corcoran. I mean, Cappy should be able to overpower him fairly easily. Play it out. Ground ball in the hole. Solars. Yes. Felt like that was a, another opportunity to uh, commit an error, but we'll, we'll take it. We go to the top of the ninth inning. Steve Centeni coming into the ball game. He was a part-time closer last year for Toronto. He had 14 saves, 5 blueies, 5 ERA. That is not good. Uh, this year, it's uh, Dave Tobik, who is their closer. Who's in 39 games. Hey, he's a pretty solid pitcher. Uh, this is a guy who uh, only pitched in 1983 in real life. So uh, you take a look there at his 1983 baseball card. Lou's up, leading off the top of the ninth inning. Lou's... One for two, couple walks, stolen base today. And a ground ball to Orge. One down here in the ninth inning. Glenn Wilson up next. Wilson repeats the process. Ground ball to second. Wilson falls to 0-4 on the day. And Gibby walks. Two walks for Gibson. Couple base hits in there. So runner on first, do we dare run? Yes, we do. We're going to give him the green light. Gibby will go if he's got a good pitch. There's Mickey Hatcher. 1-0 count. I'm swinging. Come on. I'm not a big fan of the green light option because I just really don't understand how it works, I guess. Um which is maybe more about my ignorance than it is with the game. 
uh, ha having the option. We're going to bring in our closer, Roger Weaver. Only righty's coming up. That doesn't mean we won't see a home run, but you just just feel better with Weaver in the ball game. He had 23 saves for us last year. He had a couple blueies. Not not a big deal. Uh, that 130 ERA is amazing, and of course, opponents only batted 180 against him. He does like to walk people, but at least he um, improved on his walk to strikeout ratio last year, having more Ks than uh, walks. So here's Paul Dade leading off. We're not going to make any defensive changes. This is who we've got. We, now we have not had a hit since the fifth inning, so um, I don't know, I feel like the tide has changed a, a, a little bit here as. Dade grounds out to third, so there's one down. Ten pitch at bat for Dade. Working Weaver. One out. Next up is Steve Davis. And Davis gets some good wood, sends it out to Gibby and left. Out number two. It's down to Garth Orange. We're going to pull the outfielders in. Orange doesn't have any power. If it gets by him, that'll be a problem out there in the outfield. But otherwise, we'll try to catch a short fly ball. Hey! Wait, did I pull the corners in? I might have, I might have made a mistake to our advantage as, we, as a Hatcher was ready for the ground ball. Tigers win. Handshakes, butt slaps, sloppy stakes. We're 4-0 on the season. And there is our first trade offer. It is from the Reds. They are offering us a catcher, Bud Bowling. He came over to Cincinnati from Seattle, Tom Lawless, who I believe is a pretty decent utility guy. Let's take a look at Tom Lawless. Uh, no, actually, he's a terrible guy. Only second base uh, of, is his uh, only real availability. And Rafael Santo Domingo, um, he's a shortstop. So yeah, none of these guys are, are interesting. I wouldn't mind getting rid of Murray, uh, but it's too early in the season to make that call. So we're going to say no thanks. Let's take a look at the standings real quick. Cleveland loses their first game. They fall to 3-1. So we are 4-0, leading the division by a game. And, wow, the A's of all teams are in first place in the West. Now let's take a look at the headline news. Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. Advancing, and it's just about us today. Tigers win 5-4. to four. Um, Brock, who is definitely the player of the game, had a couple home runs, 5 RBI. Lou Whitaker had a good game, too. So, okay, this is a good job by the... Uh, this must have been a tweak that... Uh, Clay made where the um, newspaper makes a little bit more sense now. Let's take a look at the transactions. And we have uh, two new injuries. Bob Ojeda, we just saw him. He's going to miss a couple of weeks due to a uh, pinky fracture. So, oh, it says one day until rested. Um, okay, I don't know what that's all about. Maybe that's a, a glitch in the game. And Don Paul out two weeks. There we go. So, all right, that's going to do it. We're going to take a look at the uh, box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like and or subscribe. And uh, player of the game, it's an easy call. It's going to be the Brock Ness Monster, Greg Brock. He had the two home runs, the five ribby. There he is right there. Um, he had a single mixed in. Back-to-back uh, -back games for the Tigers with a, a player hitting two home runs. Dan Petrie gets to win. All of our starters have got, uh, uh, been part of the decision. That doesn't happen very often, I don't think. And Roger Weaver gets his second save. John uh, Jim Clancy takes the loss. He goes to 0-1 on the season. Uh, four total home runs. Very interesting. So we're going to come back tomorrow with game two of the three-game series. Until then, everyone, have a great night.